Uh oh, who knows what this means. I've got an underground fence here and it's beeping. And the loop light is not lit up. And no matter where I adjust it, strong or back to weak, it does not let up. I'm making a note of where that was to put it back. Well, let's fix this and I want to show you easily how to find the break in the fence in this case. But first, let's give you an overview of how these systems work. Here I have an extra system. It's an old system, but I think it still works. And I use it as a spare if I need it. But regardless, they all work about the same way. What we have here is also the power loop light on. You can still hear my other system beeping in the background, and we're going to fix that in a minute. And then we've got some terminals here to connect to. These are usually powered by a little transformer. The principle is this. Your underground fence is one wire that goes around your yard and is buried. It's a single wire. It may be stranded, it may be solid, this is just a test wire. And what I have is one single wire here. And what it does is it makes a loop from one of these terminals to the other. So both of these terminals have to be intact for this power loop light to be on and for it not to be emitting a sound. Not all of them emit a sound, but the other one that I'm going to fix today, mine, it does have a sound. So this has to be intact. When you're, and it's transmitting an AM, very important, we're going to talk about why that's important, an AM signal. And uh, it's transmitting a radio signal under the ground, and when your pet gets close to it with its collar and then starts to cross it, it makes that warning beep, or if you've got it set to shock, that's how it set the shock. Is there any voltage going through this? No, it's a radio signal. The voltage is tiny if it's going through it at all. So you also have an um, adjustment here, and you'll read your own manual to see how to adjust that from a strong signal to a weak signal. Generally, the stronger you are, the further away your pet is with their collar before they detect. The weaker it is... Um, the further away that they can be. So the closer they can be if it's, uh, if it's strong. Um, it's, they would be way out in your yard and it go off. But the weaker, I should say, is when they get right up to it. So we generally set that to about the middle. And also this is dependent on the distance of your wire in your yard. If it's several hundred feet, you may need a stronger radio signal to go out to the yard. And that's generally what that does all in layman's terms of course i'm not an expert except i've had these systems for many years now let's talk about how you test your system first off you want to make sure it's transmitting at least some kind of uh, signal out into your wire in your yard and you want to do a loop test if you've got a beep going on like i do or the loop light is off and the way you do a loop test is you get a scrap piece of wire, and I think they generally recommend a several feet. I'm using what I have on hand. So now let's go back over to the system that we have. And let's take a look at it, and you'll see it matches up with what we went over today. You've got a boundary wire here, and you've got a um, power wire coming in here, and that just powers the system. So... The other thing that's good to have is a uh, transformer to protect your system. I'm going to put this on pause and get someone to help me with the camera, or at least put this in, is what I'll do, to show you how that goes off. So I'm doing my loop test now, and I'm close. You see that I just got it on both of the terminals. So I'm creating a loop, making it sure it has a loop. So what this is telling me is that likely my system's good. But I've got a break somewhere out in my yard, and I need to find that. And it's challenging to do. And now we're going to show you how you find that break without having any fancy equipment. And you'll be able to find that break and fix it. Remember when I said these use an AM signal generally? That's what I found in almost all cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an AM radio this one's fm and am and we're going to get it to recognize a sound for the system by tuning it to a similar frequency and you'll see how that works in a moment and then we'll walk over where we know the wire should be in our yard 
and where we hear the wire it's good and connected and then where we don't hear the wire on the other side of a break that's where it's probably broken now what works best for this is one of these little handheld AM FM radios and I have one somewhere couldn't find it so I put together a little system to be able to do this using the clock radio if you saw my video on how to jump start a car you'll see I have a halo halo does not sponsor my channel at this time and I don't have any sponsors but what a halo is neat is not only can it jump a car but it can run some low amperage devices um, without having a generator or anything else you might have a jackery or something similar but in this case I'm going to use a halo and I'm going to power my clock radio the AM part of it is all I'm interested in and you'll see how that works here in a second let me pause it plug this thing up and turn it on now we're plugged up I'm going to turn on my power using my halo make sure that the switch is on You'll see that uh, I'm getting a radio channel. And it's an AM radio channel. I have my system set to AM because these broadcast an AM signal. And now we need to figure out if this guy can actually hear some kind of indication that it's close to the wire. And now let's go over to the wire close to where your receiver system is, where you know it's not broken and I'll show you the next steps. People consider when they're thinking about a location to put it in. You'll see that I'm close to my building and that here's the wire I know is not broken and it's sending out the signal assembly. So I've got my radio here tuned just to some any station and then you want to slowly dial it in until you hear something that sounds like that pulsing noise. You hear it? I was close and I knew I'd be close. Somewhere around the 700 on your dial. I know that says 70, but it actually indicates 700 because it's times 10. Do you hear that? It's actually mimicking that beeping noise and that surging that our system's making. get it good and strong and I fixed my system today but now I'm going to show a video of how I fi figured out where the system was now that I've got it tuned I'm going to walk over here to a place in my yard and I'm going to do some testing turn the radio alright so I'm out here in another area where I believe that the wire is that's how I test it and I'm going to turn up the radio pretty loud and then I'm going to walk up over to another area where I suspect the brake is. You hear that? Now let's walk along and you can actually do like this and you can hear it a little bit. And then there'll be a spot where you won't hear a thing. And sure enough, that's how I found my brake. I don't know if you can hear in the distance my machine, my system still beeping. But then you want to fix this. And you want to fix it by scanning the wire back. And then making a connection here. And now you can see there's no more beep. I don't know if you can hear that, but the beep stopped in the background. And that's how you find your brake and fix it. Now, about these connections, you want to skin back a good bit and you want to twist them. Twist over and over again. Don't bother soldering them. A stronger connection is what happens when you twist something that gets enough surface area on it. And then you want to put some wire nuts on there that may, maybe has silicone on it or put silicone up in your wire nuts before you do it. Um, or do shrink wrap. Uh, they don't have to be totally watertight. It is best if it's watertight, but they don't have to be totally watertight. You're dealing with a radio signal under the ground. And that's how you fix your underground fence with an AM radio. And that's a little bit of an overview as well. I hope you learned something new, and uh, if not, maybe you were just entertained. Please like, share, and subscribe to Swimming in the Deep. Thanks for watching.